Hello, welcome, and good evening. And today I want to talk again about capturing videos for retro computers because this took me a while to figure out. I've already presented uh, this device here, the open source scan converter, in a previous video, and I will link to that in the video description as well. And yeah, I will talk a bit more about this today as well. And how I actually set up my machine to do that. As mentioned, I tried out different um, cheaper alternatives for converting VGA to HDMI to get a capture capable solution, but they didn't work out. And the OSSC is really nice in several regards. So it has a multitude of inputs they are all RGB, um, so basically you have VGA on this side for the um, IBM PC compatibles. You have RGB component input here for, for example, for modded consoles or um, like any kind of home computer from the 80s or so that has RGB output and where you can, well, um, make your own cable basically. And SCART input, for example, for the Sega Genesis or Mega Drive, as it's known here in Europe, um, which I use basically as well. And then you have audio input and audio output and HDMI on this side. Yeah, so since I only have the Mega Drive and the P PC, the 286, that's actually the perfect solution for me. I can use both things and switch between them. And that's very nice. If you want to have something that does as video for example if you want to attach a c64 or the like you're out of luck or if you want to attach ega or cga which uses rgb plus intensity you're out of luck for both there are separate solutions none of which i own um, the c64 is best dealt with uh, retro tink i think at the moment and there is a cg and eg and mda converter board uh, also open source and community driven, that's also available. Maybe at some point in the future I'll get my hands on those. However, I don't even have a C64 that doesn't make that much sense, so I guess you can see um, yeah, at other people's videos about that. The open source can converter um, can most easily be used together with the remote that they sell for this. You can use actually any remote, any learning remote, this is also one. And you can also buy overlays that you can stick on top where all the buttons are marked, but when I got this, they were sold out. So um, the most important stuff is obviously um, how to switch between the inputs. You do that uh, via the nine buttons here. So this is input AV1, AV2, AV3, and then different color and sync formats. I only use one and three for one is the SCART input, uh, which basically works out of the box with the Sega drive, uh, Mega Drive, and three is the AV3 VGA input with um, separate horizontal, horizontal and vertical sync signals, which is basically IBM VGA standard. So I don't need any of those buttons down there. Up here you can switch um, the post-processing stuff like making some, uh, what do you call it, scan lines and things, but I usually don't touch that because I think without scan lines VGA stuff looks best. The lower res stuff like the consoles do look nice maybe, if you like that. If you upscale them like five times and insert some scan lines, that's pretty okay. And furthermore, the most important thing here is the menu um, button and the exit and the cursor keys for setting all the menus because otherwise you can't basically can't access them only via these two buttons here that's I think more or less impossible yeah so this is a great thing I highly recommend this device but the question then is what do you do with that I mean VGA I can just plug into my LCD screen still has a VGA port and works perfectly fine, but um, I can't capture with it. And capturing VGA via some different means is also 
usually not pretty. So this is the upscaler and I get v uh, HDMI as the output. So what are your options? Then, um, well, I went for one of the cheapest ones that I could get. I just searched for USB HDMI capture on eBay and found this device from China, pretty nondescript. It, let's see if I can show it here. Um, let's focus. Yeah, it focuses. It says USB 3.0 HD capture. <laughs> Here's the HDMI in. This is USB 3.0 out. And this is plug and play. This is really plug and play. You plug it in, at least on the Mac, um, you plug it in, there's no drivers to be installed, it just registers as a video capture device on your machine. And HDMI goes in here, and yeah, you basically get an MJPEG or some other kind of stream out and on the other end. And it works out of the box with uh, all the common software tools, mainly the open broadcast system, OBS, which I'm using for capturing and or streaming stuff. And we will take a look at that as well. So what will the actual setup be? Basically, let's take the cable here. Basically you need a solid and not too long um, HDMI lead. HDMI lead goes in on the AV out of the uh, open source scan converter goes in to this device. Then you also need the output of your favorite sound card, my trusty Adlib clone in this case. Plug it in here. Um, if you want, you can hook up your Mega Drive, but the cable is too short. So um, you just plug in the command. Um, VGA here. And you need a five volts barrel plug as well. Sorry, I bumped the camera, which is also too short, but this is basically the setup. More, You don't need more cables than that, and you're pretty much good to go. And yeah, now I'm gonna switch over to the computer and tell you a bit more about the OBS and how to record with it and how to set it up a little bit. Um, and also how to tweak the timings on this device for actual VGA capture, because the presets did not work for me, at least in combination with this capture device. All right, so um, I'm using OBS Studio, the open broadcaster software, and it's cross-platform, it's free, it's just great, basically. It is available for Windows, macOS, and Linux. And I'm sharing this now on macOS, but it is basically, it looks the same on all three platforms, and you will have no problems downloading and installing it, I guess. And yeah, it can be used for recording all kinds of stuff, not only your games that you play on your own computer, but also take videos, stream to Twitch, um, YouTube, whatever. There's a lot of plugins that help you with that. And I think it's one of the go-to solutions. And yeah, you basically just choose the operating system, click on it, and download it. And then when you run it and um, you have to set it up. I've already set up a few things so um, excuse me that all this stuff here is in German but I couldn't be bothered to change the system language. So yeah um, this should be easily translatable. So basically what you have is you have your um, big screen where you can see what you're capturing or yeah at the moment and um, your stream or recording is consisting of different scenes that you can create. You start off with um, no scenes or a default scene. And I created here a few for the two different things that I need for my PC, basically. And also you can add sources, which would be stuff like webcams, cameras, or the capture device. And um, the USB capture device I just shown you will show up as the FHD cap here. You can basically just add um, new devices here and this would be a video capture device and I have two here, the internal webcam of the Mac and the FHD capture device. 
So I already added that before. And you can show the properties. You can set the resolution, the capture resolution. I think on eBay it says, and in the manual, that it only supports 1280 by 720, so 720p. But I can actually crank it up to 1080p. However, um, since I have an old iMac, I stick with 720p, and the resolutions I'm driving on the PC come nowhere near that resolution, so I think I'm fine for that. But you may want to crank it up. Same goes for the FPS. I'm currently capturing with 30 FPS. The PC does 70 FPS, so 60 would be nicer. You probably would have less jitter, um, but it doesn't match perfectly anyway with the PC. And both the 720p and the 30 frames per second reduce the strain on my machine and the video size. Output format for this capture device can be either YUI color format, compressed basically, or a motion JPEG, which is basically just a series of JPEG files being streamed. Here you can have some ringing artifacts, and here you have uh, resolution problems probably with the, with the color channels as well. I choose this because I think I see less artifacts on, on stuff like retro games, which have usually hard contrasts compared to the MJPEG, but you can choose your own stuff. Um, color space is usually 601. I'm not sure about the details about this. And uh, video, video by in English, I don't know. Uh, just set this to full. It's, I think, also depending on the color space or something. Uh, I think, yeah, you see the blacks get much darker here. And if you go to full, then you have much better shading here in the dark areas. By the way, this is the, what you see here is the um, test screen of the OSSC, and which is pretty nice because you can see if anything of the overscan is cut off, or you can actually capture everything, and everything is good. And it is. We see everything here. Um, you can use buffering to make it more robust, but this is bad for streaming and audio sync because yeah. It, will buffer roughly, I don't know, a few hundred milliseconds and it's very noticeable. So usually you want to put this off, except if you have really problems um, on your machine. A few machines to slow, probably. Okay, so this is our scene. Um, let us probably flip the switch already of the 286. Will it come up? Yes, it comes up. The 286 is booting. And first thing you notice is uh, there are some noise down here. And um, this is because the OSSC is not really tweaked for um, PC resolutions. I will go through the settings um, in a short while, what I needed to set to make it like this. However, you can um, add transformations. And I already set this up so that the scaling is correct. So basically, you can calculate. Um, we have a. We can calculate the the size of the whole thing. 1080 times 4 divided by 3 gives us 1440 pixels. So I set the size of this thing to 1440 by 1080, and to make it centered in the capture screen. I um, shifted it by 240 pixels. I can move it around here to the left or to the right, but I want to have it centered and that's at 240 pixels here. Exactly. So um, the noise we can get rid of by just cutting from the bottom because there are some extra lines that we don't want and after five or six lines we have all the DJ information in here. If I run Windows, I actually don't want to cut off anything. Windows runs in full VGA mode. So 640 before 80 is correct, and you see the noise disappears. And we have the full VGA screen here. Um, but going back to DOS, we will see the problem again in a short while. So I set up a 720 by 400 
seen here. Um, it seems that you always can do this on the capture device. So basically here I added the six or seven lines in this case of cropping. So these are the only two scenes that you actually need. Um, I added Twitch scenes as well for experimentation where I used the webcam as well. But yeah, that doesn't matter quite much here. So with these two modes, you can basically cover most of the 80s and 90s games. Everything that runs either in 200 lines modes or 480 lines or 240 lines modes will be covered by that. So yeah. Concerning the OCC, you need to set it up, go to the uh, input sampler, and there you can add uh, edit your own, well, uh, timings. You can go to the advanced timing setting and it's all documented in the wiki. But I had to come up with these numbers myself. They are close to the ones that are now in the current firmware, but a little bit different. So for all the 200 or 400 line modes, these are the values that you need to use, so you can pause here and write them down. And for the 480 line modes, as well as mode X with 240 lines, you need to have those here. Your mileage may vary if you use a different uh, screen that you attach to the OSC or maybe a different capture device. But with my cheapo capture device, this is the way how to get everything fine and centered. And also, I had to change the 480p in sampler to the DTV 480p mode because otherwise it will look weird. I can show you, not quite weird, but it will cut off some stuff. So let's fire up Windows again. And I'll quickly go into the settings on the OSSC, sampling options, and now it's currently set to DTV 480p. And if I switch this to uh, VESA mode, there's a lot of stuff cut off at the top, as you see, and we have a little bit of a black bar at the bottom. The auto sampler will switch to VESA as well, I don't know why. And only if I switch to DTV 480p, I actually get a non cropped image. Yeah, okay, so I think this more or less wraps it up. Um, this was the best and most cost-effective capture setup that I could come up with that actually works with um, PCs and consoles. If you have any better ideas, uh, feel free to tell me in the comments or what your experiences are. Maybe you have different capture devices that work also better with the cheap VGA to HDMI scalers. But um, yeah, I tried out one or two devices and they didn't work out. So yeah, this is my setup. Hope you enjoyed it. Hope you can use it. And thanks. Share, like, and subscribe if you want to. Otherwise, good night and good evening.